Okay. I want to uh, just give a little explanation on this thyrus to speed controller, this lab belt. Thyrus to speed control model 9017. Just uh, zoom in on the picture here. Now, connection wise, um, we'll just see if I can zoom up here a bit. So, connection wise, uh, you've got you supply the power input with um, 240 volts AC. There's a little 5 amp circuit breaker here. This is a uh, DC rectifier which creates a DC bus that goes to the shunt winding on the DC motor. And uh, terminals one and two are the outputs of the thyristor rectifier, uh, variable DC bus, which goes to the armature. And we're measuring current and voltage, the current through the armature winding and voltage across the armature winding. Now, um, it's not the best picture, but I'm going to try and persevere with this one. So I just want to talk a little bit about the controls. Uh, starting from the left hand side, uh, we've got the uh, voltage uh, box here. The reference, think of the voltage reference as really the speed setting for the, the motor. So it's the reference speed setting. So it doesn't mean that's what it's actually doing, but that's uh, what you, uh, you're you trying to get to that speed. Um, and minimum just means the minimum voltage that's going into this control circuit or the minimum speed that um, that voltage reference can go down to. So the voltage reference goes from the minimum set here up to a maximum. Uh, the run selector, if, of course, if it's set to zero, then that doesn't get inputted into the control circuit. Otherwise, if you switch to one, you get that signal coming in. The reference indicator determines how quickly the control system responds to changes in the voltage reference. So if the reference integrator is on minimum, that means there's a minimum amount of integration on that input signal. So if you do a sudden change, then a sudden change gets transmitted straight through into the control circuit. And that could uh, lead to, this, to the uh, circuit breaker tripping. Whereas the softer your motor starts, which means more towards maximum integration, um, the slower it takes to accelerate up. So it really determines the maximum rate of acceleration. Uh, so as it goes towards minimum, the acceleration is higher. As it goes to maximum, the acceleration is less. Um, now with current feedback, uh, basically as the motor is loaded, it draws more current through the armature. So the degree to which that current measurement affects the control circuit is controlled by the current feedback knob. So again, if it's on minimum, then the control circuit is less sensitive to the amount of load current or the, to the amount of load on the motor. Whereas if it's on maximum, it's more sensitive to the amount of load current flowing through the armature winding. Uh, this control down here, current limit, really uh, uh, limits the maximum amount of uh, current that the uh, control circuit will respond to. So for example, if the current limit is on minimum, uh, then it's doing the minimum amount of current limiting. Now I could have that wrong, but I think that's what it means. Whereas maximum current limit means that it's, uh, I think it's around uh, maybe 100 milliamps or something like that. So you don't get much range of response uh, due to current change if current limit is on maximum. Um, voltage feedback, uh, basically in voltage feedback, you can see where it's measuring the voltage from. Basically, as the motor gets lowered down, you get uh, more losses on the supply side. So the internal resistance of the supply side causes a bigger voltage drop because there's more current flowing. So you get a smaller voltage across the armature. Now, to compensate for that, uh, that's what this phase is for. So if it's on minimum, it's less sensitive to drops in voltage across the armature. Uh, if it's on maximum, it's more sensitive to drops in voltage across the armature. Um, so all those things go into this uh, error detection unit. Then you've got error integrator, and that it comes through into the firing circuit if the closed-loop switch is switched to one. 
If it's switched to zero, then it's purely just a manual control of the firing angle, which determines when the thyristors fire. Uh, and that's really a brief summary of that control circuit. Now, uh, just an added thought, this uh, little circuit breaker and the mains power supply breaker can trip quite a lot. Um, this thing, if it's not tuned right, can be quite unstable um, and the current can wildly fluctuate, which can easily cause these um, this breaker and the breaker on the mains power supply to trip. And that's all I wanted to say about that one.